Okay, so this is the original screen that you'll start with um, if you've installed Noobs. And here you can pick any um, operating system you want. We've got Arch Linux, uh, we've got OpenELEC, Pedora. I don't even know, I've never even heard of this. RISC OS, Raspbian C, don't know anything. And you've got Raspbian, which is like the recommended um, operating system. Um, Raspbian's really easy to use, I would say. And so I think for the purpose of this video, we'll go over that. But if you're used to a Linux operating system and you want to use a lot of things uh, that are like intended for Linux, then Arch Linux might be a better idea for you. But anyway, we're going to download Raspbian. So it's just saying that uh, this is going to overwrite everything. If you have anything, and that's okay. We're going to hit yes. And we'll begin your uh, writing of the image to the SD card. So basically what this is doing is it's saving you the job of, of writing that image to the SD card because originally you would have had to learn how to write the image to the SD card. You can still do that if you want, but this is so much easier. And then what, what makes it really nice is you can, since there are so many operating systems, like if you're like me, it's like, well, shit, I don't know which one I want to use. I kind of want to like look through them all and, and decide, you know? And so this makes it really easy to do that. Plus like um, there's going to be times where you want a specific program with uh, your Raspberry Pi, and you'll be like, and, and you'll need a specific operating system, like some, maybe someone wrote it purely for uh, Raspbian, right? You don't really know until you start figuring out what you want to do. So I think a lot of people buy the Raspberry Pi, and they have no idea what they even want to do with it. They just buy it, because it's, it's like a little fun little thing, right? It's a toy. That's exactly what it is. It's a toy. So anyway, um, I'm going to pause the video while we're doing this. There's some uh, information that it gives you as it is downloading your operating system. So, you know, at least there's something you can do while you watch. Basically, the most important thing you want to know, at least at this step, is if you want to access that menu ever again, because uh, naturally it will just boot straight to your desktop. Um, but if you want it again, on startup, hold down the shift key, and that'll give you the op option to change your uh, operating system. I'll bite it, we'll, we'll overwrite anything uh, that you had so far, so any programs, etc., that are on the SD card. If you have programs on a USB drive, good to go. Right, so once you get the image applied successfully, you'll get the image applied successfully uh, message here, and you'll just need to hit OK, and then what it's going to do is it's going to uh, boot the line and do some more commands for you. Um, I think we'll just keep it running. I, I believe it's actually a pretty quick um, process here. So I'll just speed up the video if it takes a while. So the next thing that will happen eventually is you'll go, it'll give you a screen up here and it lets you choose a few options as far as like boot options are concerned. I like, I think it's kind of like the BIOS for uh, your Raspberry Pi is a good way to think of it. And so you can decide whether you want to boot to this Raspberry Pi BIOS every time or if you want to go to the desktop. So you can change that really simply. Um, and there's a few other uh, things that you can do. Um, okay, so here we are in our, in our BIOS. So um, you can expand the file system. I guess this is just a good way to make sure that every all your space on the SD card is getting used. But let me grab the keyboard. Let's go over each of these options here. You can change the user password. So right now the user, um, that's interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I was reading Pi. I was like, that's not true. Anyway, the um, the default username and password, uh, if, if you don't happen to go through this, is um, the username is Pi, the password is Raspberry. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, enable boot to desktop. This is where you can make it go to desktop instead of the command line, but I kind of think it's best to go straight to the command line first. Um, internationalization options. I don't even read this, but I guess it's just for region and language and all this. The camera, this is just to work with that camera. There's a Raspberry Pi camera that you can get. Add to Rastrack. Um, I don't know what this is. Uh, some sort of tracking map for Raspberry Pis? I don't know. Um, here you can start to overclock. We'll do some, some of that uh, in another video. Advanced options, we'll talk about those probably in another video. And then this is just some more information regarding the Raspberry Pi. Otherwise, uh, just hit finish. 
and you will be sent to your command line, which is beginning right here. And so actually, uh, the first thing that we're going to do to start your desktop, you want to just say start. Sorry, I'm standing up. Let me sit down. So you want to say start, and then just hit X, and like that will send you to your desktop. Now, when we finally get there, um, you see we've got this beautiful background. Looks yummy. And um, you should, you know, feel fairly comfortable with this desktop. Uh, it looks, you know, it's got a little bar down here, like a start bar. Um, initially, whenever I was running it, this was just like a total black box. Like I didn't have any bars or anything. I was like, what is going on here? Like some sort of image is dead. But no, this is actually like your running processes. And it looks like this is a shutdown, or I guess it's a logout. I'm not really sure if it would shut us down or not. But I'll show you guys how to shut down in a minute. Um, but anyway, coming like pre-installed on here, you've got all kinds of fun stuff. This is a way to get to your terminal really easily without logging out. Um, and then you've also got Python 3 and then Python 2.7. Both are installed on this system. So if you're familiar with either of those coding languages, uh, you can use them both on here, which is pretty cool that it's like already on the system. Um, I clicked them both and you can like see over here it just goes crazy if you like click something you'll be like clicking it you, it won't come up instantly if you you know if you're used to a fast computer um, it won't come up instantly and you'll click it again and, and again you'll be like what's up pie frozen and then like they'll all pop up like five minutes later and you'll be like oh damn <laughs> anyway so yeah so you got 2.7 and python 3.2.3 on here so pretty epic to have them both on there for you. There's also Scratch. It recommended that you use Scratch uh, if you watched all of the information it was giving you while you were downloading. But honestly, I mean, maybe I assume most of the people watching my tutorials are somewhat familiar with programming. What is this? Like, <laughs> I just don't know what to do with this program. So maybe someone can tell me <laughs> what you're supposed to do here. I'm sure there's like some sort of online tutorial for this. But this looks really confusing to me. <laughs> anyway, um, no, don't save.